If you want people to listen to you, you have to listen to them. If you hope people will change how they live, you have to know how they live. If you want people to see you, you have to sit down with the mighty eye. Don't think about making women fit the world, think about making the world fit women. No wonder studies show that women's intellectual self-esteem tends to go down as years of education go up. We have been studying our own absence. Happy or unhappy, families are all mysterious. Altogether, if I'd been looking at nothing but the media all these years, I would be a much more discouraged person especially, given the notion that only conflict is news, and that objectivity means being even-handedly negative. I wonder. If you think of someone you love, do you become a little more like them? I would like to think so. No one ever got radicalized by being grateful. The road is messy in the way that real life is messy. It leads us out of denial and into reality, out of theory and into practice, out of caution and into action, out of statistics and into stories in short, out of our heads and into our hearts. Her searches after knowledge were arbitrary and without context. It was as if she were shining a small flashlight of curiosity into the dark room of the world. Power can be taken, but not given. The process of the taking is empowerment in itself. It's said that the biggest determinant of our lives is whether we see the world as welcoming or hostile. Each becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. When the past dies, there is mourning, but when the future dies our imaginations are compelled to carry it on. Feminism is not women as victims but women refusing to be victims. Anybody who is experiencing something is more expert in it than the experts. We'll never solve the feminization of power until we solve the masculinity of wealth. After all, hope is a form of planning. Even the dictionary defines adventurer as a person who has, enjoys, or seeks adventures, but adventurous is a woman who uses unscrupulous means in order to gain wealth or social position. The root of oppression is the loss of memory. Perhaps our need to escape into media is a misplaced desire for the journey. In retrospect, perhaps the biggest reason my mother was cared for but not helped for 20 years was the simplest. Her functioning was not that necessary to the world. If someone called me a lesbian in those days all single feminists were assumed to be lesbians I learned just to say, thank you. It disclosed nothing, confused the accuser, conveyed solidarity with women who were lesbians, and made the audience laugh. I'm also now immune to politicians who say, I've traveled the length and breadth of this great land, and I know I've traveled more than any of them, and I don't know. Wherever I go, 
bookstores are still the closest thing to a town square. I've noticed that great political leaders are energized by conflict. I'm energized by listening to people's stories and trying to figure out shared solutions. That's the work of an organizer. Needing approval is a female cultural disease and often a sign of doing the wrong thing. I can go on the road because I can come home. I come home because I'm free to leave. Each way of being is more valued in the presence of the other. What we're told about this country is way too limited by generalities, sound bites, and even the supposedly enlightened idea that there are two sides to every question. In fact, many questions have three or seven or a dozen sides. It's important for someone who could play the game and win to say, the game isn't worth shit. You cannot think yourself into right living. You live yourself into right thinking. Native elders, Perhaps the most revolutionary act for a woman will be a self-willed journey and to be welcomed when she comes home. At my age, in this still hierarchical time, people often ask me if I'm passing the torch. I explain that I'm keeping my torch, thank you very much and I'm using it to light the torches of others. I began to understand with a terrible sureness that we teach what we need to learn and write what we need to know. Since learning causes our brains to grow new synapses, I like to believe that the road is sharpening my mind and lengthening my life with surprise. In native spiritualities, there is often a belief that we cannot pray unless we've laughed. We need to unlearn our respect for education, since it has undermined our respect for ourselves. It's worth taking time to demystify it. All the things an adolescent can be are reduced to a three-digit number. We too can decide how to value our education, instead of letting them value us. Because adventure starts the moment I leave my door. Racism and sexism are intertwined and cannot be uprooted separately. Sometimes when I'm in the midst of all this, I can hear my mother saying, democracy is just something you must do every day, like brushing your teeth. <laughs>